Well, I'm planning to do two video segments on uh, a relatively simple problem which involves a single part, which is self-contacting. Uh, the only uh, uh, difference between this and some of the other contact, numerous other contact problems that I've done uh, uh, in this uh, uh, channel is that, first of all, I'm using a single part. I'm not doing an assembly. And the second thing is that the elements that I'm using are extruded element or swept element. They are not the standard uh, four node or eight node tetrahedral uh, elements, which is the free, uh, default free meshing in, in Catillo. So here's a situation. We have a part like that. I'll show you the dimensions uh, in a second, in a, in, a few, in a minute. And then this, uh, this part, the left side of it, the left uh, left end of it is clamped, as you can see here, and the top is uh, subjected to a pressure. So uh, this arm will actually bend and eventually establishes contact with the bottom piece, okay? And uh, stresses develop and things of that nature. Now, the second video that I'm going to do, uh, on purpose, I uh, made the geometry a little bit more complicated so that it, when it comes to uh, creating the mesh, you run into problems and you have to fix it uh, before you can get the mesh uh, uh, done easily. Okay, this is fairly straightforward. Now, uh, the dimensions of uh, the dimensions of this part are uh, given here. So these are all in millimeters. So this is roughly 62 millimeters. This is almost 180 millimeter, and there is a gap between the top and the bottom, which is around three millimeter. So you can eyeball this thing if you want. You can create a, create a geometry, but it's right, right there. Uh, so, some of them, are, obviously, this is not fully constrained, so you have to make some decision as far as uh, these angles, this angle and this length, etc. But I'll leave it to you. That's really not the focus of the presentation. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to generate the part that's already created for you. Uh, let's see now. It's right here. So uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start from here and uh, uh, go through the uh, simulation process. Okay. Now uh, we we want to do a, 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 a swept mesh. In other words, uh, we create a mesh on this face, shell mesh on this face, and then sweep it. Now, in order to create a, a surface mesh or shell mesh on this face, we need to have extracted it, and I've done it. I've, I've extract, extracted, extracted that right here. Uh, process, uh, sorry, uh, hide and show. And I want to remind you where this extraction is done is in, in, uh, in we are in generative uh, shape design, and the extraction is right here. You see this? Uh, right there. This is extract uh, any particular feature. Right, right there. Okay. Now uh, we need to create a shell mesh here, so we're going to go to Advanced Meshing Tool because I want to create a nice, uh, uh, a nice uh, uh, all quad, you know, mesh. Yeah. So uh, right there, and I said this is a, this this is the surface mesh that I've used. Uh, uh, many times uh, last uh, few days and posted the results. So I'm going to select this uh, extracted face. All quad, that means uh, don't give me any triangular one if you can manage that. And then uh, linear, of course, and the size five millimeters. Okay, five millimeter, roughly the size of it. And uh, we don't have to worry about any of these things that are irrelevant uh, to us. Okay, and let me remind you, after you, you specify that, then you click on this uh, icon. And I, I refer to this icon as zapping the surface because there's something on it which is like a Z. It's really not zapping it, but that's what I call it. So you click on it, and this is the uh, shell mesh that is generated. And once you're done and you're happy, you just exit exit this uh, particular surface mesh right, right there. Good. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do, we want to we want to sweep this through that volume. Now, remember, uh, you, th that's also the same as extrusion, except ex ex except that for sweeping you need a volume, and we have it. You, you need geometry, and for extrusion we don't need you don't need geometry. If you look at the video four of four, 
uh, of the previous sequence that I posted, uh, there is no geometry associated. But this is sweeping. So ex extend this thing. So you look here, right there, solid meshing. There it says sweep. And notice that the first thing it asks you, if you look at the, the, the prompt here, it says select a volume to mesh. Obviously, the volume is this or, or part, basically. Okay. And then it says select, select the bottom face. That means one face where the mesh, mesh uh, shell mesh is sitting. So this side. And for the second, means the top is the other side. Okay. And then it says how many layers. If you go to the second tab, uh, how many layers? Uh, now let me look at my uh, slide. We have, uh, it looks like we have maybe eight, eight layers. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, 8, that's already 8, and then you say apply. No problem. When I try to do the same thing in the following follow-up video segment, you're going to run into a problem, and you have to fix it, and you worry about it then. Okay, good. Now, remember, the purpose... The, the purpose of this surface measure was to create a shell that we can we can sweep. So we're done with this. We're done with this surface measure. We can delete it, but you can deactivate it. And you have to deactivate it while you're in advanced machine tool right there. Okay? It's deactivated. All right. But, uh, and, and then we're done. The rest of the problem is done in the, uh, the uh, uh, generative structure analysis. So let's save this thing, by the way. File, save management, analysis, save as, uh, analysis two. I already have something called analysis one there, so I changed the name. Very good. So we switch workbenches. We go to uh, uh, generative structure analysis. I want to remind you, if you haven't done it so that you have, if you haven't custom, customized your uh, interface so that you just click here and it takes you to other places, you can go to start, uh, analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. So it takes you there. First of all, I don't need to see this extract anymore because we have already uh, used it. Let me hide it. And now you can generate the mesh. You can look at the mesh the usual way. You put the cursor on the nodes and elements, right click, mesh visualization. There we are. And if you're happy, just uh, deactivate. Very good. So, uh, first of all, we need to create and notice that there are no properties associated with this. So we click on the 3D, uh, 3D property and select the part and immediately it identifies the material property and go. Now, when we are not, when we're using free meshing, uh, the standard default meshing in Katia, it automatically creates that 3D property for us. But if you're doing things like this, uh, manual meshing basically, uh, then you have to specify the 3D property. Otherwise, it's going to come back and complain. Okay, good. Now, let us uh, clamp the side, the sides clamp. Okay, and we're going to apply pressure here. For now, I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, maybe 80 kilo, uh, 80, 8,000. Uh, for now, I'm going to put uh, 10,000 uh, kilopascals. So the uh, so pressure on the top, uh, I'll put down 10,000 kilopascals. Okay. Remember, in Katia, you can put a billion kilopascal. I mean, it's going to give you a deflection of a million miles and things like that. So it's a responsibility when you're doing linear analysis, uh, it's the responsibility of user to make sure that the load that they're putting or the stresses that they're getting or the deflections are meaningful. In these video segments, I'm showing you the ropes, okay, so that you have your own problem. You can go and solve it uh, as a design problem. Things have to be realistic. Okay. Now we know that uh, this is not supposed to penetrate that, and it will because uh, there is nothing that stops this thing from going through the other one. So we're going to create an analysis connection, general analysis connection. For the first component, we select the bottom, uh, bottom of that top uh, lever. And for the second component, we're going to select the top of the bottom arm. Okay? And we say, okay, so a connection has been created here. Now we have to declare it as contact connection. So look at the 
connection properties. Remember, connection properties has several uh, sub toolbars in it. The first one is called face to face, and that's what you want. This is the one that we want. The next one is called uh, uh, distance analysis connection, and depending on the type of problem, you have to use one or the other. So this is a face to face, and there is a contact, and you select that connection that you created either from here or from the tree. That's entirely up to you. And then we say, okay, good. Now, assuming that uh, we didn't forget anything, uh, let's save this thing and, and run. It's always a good idea to save and run because in case Katia hangs or, uh, or uh, you inadvertently chose a very small element so that uh, you know it takes a long time and you kill the job, then at least you have saved up to that point, stuff up to that point. So uh, calculator right there, compute. Compute all and give it a, give it time. Hopefully, it'll finish. And it did. Okay. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is plot the def deformation. And notice that uh, the scale for deformation is uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make it one. The real the real deformation right there. And uh, then you look at the, for example, you look at uh, the one meter stress. Uh, where is that? Material shading. There we are. And you can animate it. If you want to see the elements simultaneously, go to the question mark in this rendering, the last one. Okay, good. And you can animate it. There. So notice that the contact has been established, and we say OK. Uh, now, in the event that you want to see the stress distribution on, for example, uh, or, or let's say the contact uh, stress distribution uh, at, at you know on, on this arm or the top, uh, the, the bottom of the top arm. So what you need to do is to create a you need to create uh, uh, groups. So uh, let me deactivate this. Deactivate that. So we're going to create a surface group. These are the way the groups are done right there. Uh, surface group. Where is the surface group? Uh, not that one. Oh, I think this is surface group. Surface group by neighborhood. I don't want surface group by neighborhood. I want surface group. So the first one is going to be body surface group. Right there. Right there. Surface group. So you can select this uh, uh, this support. Say OK. Uh, let's also do one for the top one. Another one. For the top uh Top arm. Okay, good. So uh, activate the activate the, the stress. One is the stress. Double click on it and select whatever you want. So I want, for example, let's look at the group one, which is the top of the bottom arm. There. Now notice that this effectively is a a beam on the bending, and that's why the biggest stress is at the uh, at, 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 at the uh, at the support right there. Now, if you want to see the other one, the other one is group two, which means the the bottom the bottom of that uh, top piece, top arm. The biggest stress is at the uh, at uh, at the edge, and the reason should be obvious because the reason should be obvious because this edge establishes contact with the top uh, top top of the arm bottom arm first okay that's why the biggest stress is right there because that's the first place that it touches the bottom arm so uh, this is uh, this is all done and by the way let's look at see the maximum stress happens to be you know uh, if you want to know where it is you click on the this icon here see that under analysis tool maximum and uh, say okay. The maximum stress happens to be in maximum one meter stress happens to be 
in uh, in in this area, somewhere somewhere in this area. Okay. Now, let me see. Is it the bottom? Oh yeah, right right there at the bottom of that. Now, uh, but we have absolutely no confidence on how. Double click on three. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why this is not working. Me. Okay, they'll take care of uh, they'll take care of it. Good luck. The second video, the follow-up video video segment is a different geometry, a little bit more complicated, and the machine runs into problem, and I have to show you how to fix it.